Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. I hope everyone has a wonderful day today and I'm here with an Alina Craft project share. So the dies that I have used are her mason jar or wishing, wish, bleh, wishing jar bottle which is this one here. It can be, let's see if we can get a clear picture. There we go. It can be used as a shaker or it can be used as a regular sort of like die cut jar so that you could have flowers and stuff spilling out of there. And it also comes with those two labels which are there so that you can make a nice fancy label on your jar. The other die that I used is the b -skep with branches and leaves and it comes with a teeny weeny little honeybee. You see that against my nail? So I used those and then from my stash, and I will link these below, I used my jagged edge frames, which are these. They have a stitch and a sort of like ragged edge. And I also used the large matching tag which also has that lovely stitched ragged edge. And this is what I made. So I used cardstock there from Tuesday morning, that lovely sort of like rose gold coppery uh, honeycomb design. I tried to match it in with some sequins from AliExpress. And that gold glitter card stock is from Tuesday morning. See how tiny those little bumblebees are. Now, if you want to know how to colour little things like that, I'm going to show you in a second. And there's those little branches and leaves, that card stock from Joanne. This card stock is from Alina Craft. It's from her luxury uh, foil card stock selection. And I will link to that. And a green glitter bow. See how close, oh goodness me, isn't that a nice picture for a change? And that is green glitter ribbon from AliExpress. Oh, I'm impressed. Yes, look at that. You can even see sequins today. Thank you, camera. So that is what I made using these things. Now, I'm going to show you something because people look at bumblebees like that and you can see how big that is. That is like a quarter of the size of my fingernail. And of course, you're thinking about how on earth do I colour in something so tiny? Well, with alcohol markers, you're just not going to do it. Not with regular ones. So I'm going to show you basically what I use and how you can get some better effects. So my little silicone mat here from AliExpress and these stamps are from AliExpress and I have stamped them in London Fog Memento, which is not black, but you can see it's that sort of like smoky grey. Look at that, my camera's even picking up bits of fluff. Right, so I'm going to put those there, and I'm going to show you, I use Touch 5 markers, and I love Touch 5 markers. And for this B here, for the body, I could absolutely go in and... You have to excuse if my hand gets in the way. And I would be absolutely comfortable and confident doing the body just like that. But when you look at the wings, and especially if you look at that dragonfly, I'll just finish this, you can see that they are very, very small areas indeed. So I'm going to show you what I use to get a finished effect. I use these. These are from AliExpress and they come, I'll flip it over without sending the camera blurred. You get all those colours in a box there for like 10 bucks and they're called Monami or Monami, however they pronounce it. You do get 36 in the box and they're great shades. But what's nice is they are a 0 0.3 mil nib. Let's get that one open. And you can see you've got all of those great colours to choose from, which usually blend in with my Touch 5 markers. So, for example, say I wanted to make this dragonfly. Now, you can see there's a little bit of the wing missing there. 
Now, that's not an error in the stamp. It's actually a vintage image, and that part of the image is missing. So we can actually put that back by choosing... I've stamped in London Fog, which is grey, so I'm going to choose a grey marker. And I'm leaning over here, and I can't see very well, but I can put my pen down and I can fill that in. So that's another good reason to have them. But say I wanted to make my dragonfly have rainbow colored wings, then I can. I'm going to show you the tip of that. Let's see how close we can go. See how tiny the tip is. I know my fingernails are awful. I've been gardening, but it's really, really tiny. And you can just stroke your pen into there and you can colour the bits in that you want to colour in and you're not going to go over the edges because it's so small. And now say that I want to go in with a little bit of pink, then I can do that because, as I say, the ends of the pens are absolutely tiny. So I know that I'm not going to go into anything else there and I can just create that dragonfly to be whatever colour that I want it to be. But the other useful thing is, is that I can use them to outline things where I can't get too close with a marker. So if I try and get a close shade of that B there where you saw that um, I'd coloured it, I can go around the edge of that B with this marker and I can fill that in. And then I can just go straight back in with my touch five like that. And I've got a crisp, neat edge. Now, one of the reasons I like Touch 5 is the more layers of colour you put on, the darker it gets. So that if you're colouring a flower or something like that and you're just using one pen, it's absolutely achievable. And I'll do it with this, actually. Im imagine you're colouring in a marigold. So let's start here so that you can see the three shades happening. Imagine that's a petal. And then we're going to go in on top with our second shade. And you can see the first shade is lighter towards the edge. And then we're going to put down a third shade and a fourth shade and a fifth shade. And you start to see all the different colours that you can get there out of one pen to build up a gradient. So you don't have to have nine or ten similar shade pens on your desk. One Touch 5 colour will, will just basically do it all for you. And look, whoop, let's see how close we can go. Put my hand in, see if we can get some clarity. There you go. See all those gradient shades so that you quite literally, you know, like with posh markers like Copics, you'd be using four or five shades of yellow. You don't need to do that with Touch 5. You just need the warm pen. And where you want it darker, you just add more layers. And I do apologise for my throat this morning. I've been incredibly croaky because I believe we have pollen already in the garden. Anyway... As usual, all links will be below. You have a fabulous day. I am back off out into the garden. These are my projects for today. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.